everybody hear me? Okay, that's great. So I personally <coughs> identify with the My Future NC initiative for a number of reasons. Uh, one, because of kind of unique position on, and perspective around the state. I, I get to serve on the local chamber board and kind of understand what's happening there and as well as my involvement in FAST. And, I also serve on the North Carolina Economic Development Association Board and the North Carolina Biotech Center Board. So uh, it gives us a, a vantage point that's interesting around the state. Um, but in my job, uh, on a daily basis, I get to think a lot about the future as the Vice President of Strategic Development for Bill Farm Farms, who has a long history in the state and, uh, and, and certainly uh, intends to have a significant future. Um, but I also have a past uh, where my mom was an educator and what does that mean for our system here in the state? And I'm a parent. So this is extremely important to me that we do something uh, that changes the trajectory of our state. And uh, I've always been drawn to roles that help change the trajectory of the community or the state that I serve. So. How are chambers and kind of other organizations involved and how can they be involved with this? Well, chambers particularly serve a role um, that is conveners uh, in the business community. You're out there every single day and you're hearing the needs of these businesses firsthand of what their talent concerns are. And that's a great place to be because you can turn around and explain that to the community and other entities in a way that translates to them. So they play this convener role in the middle. Uh, and you can do that in a number of different ways. You can do that in visits, you can do that in surveys, and in, in Asheville particularly, they have a research division that allows them to describe talent quantitatively to people inside of the area as well as outside the area. But particularly in the Asheville area, I would say is probably the most important piece of this is they are recognizing that skills development, which is our goal, is not a pure plug and play. If I just have enough classes available, I can just go get my skills. They recognize that there are other tentacles associated with this. If I need to go get the skills, I also need childcare. I need the ability to get there. And there's a systematic issue around that. And they're creating a plan, uh, ABL Greater, that other organizations can plug into which ultimately help fulfill the My Future NC goal. So that's an important piece that this, uh, the Asheville Chamber is um, playing. I would say in terms of, of um, why, why these things are together, there's really two reasons. One is a quantitative and one is a qualitative reason. Quantitative for Asheville, kind of an urban center in Buncombe County, uh, a job center for the region, uh, as Dr. Weatherwood described, the lowest unemployment rate, but high job growth rate. So what does that mean? That means everybody that has a job, or everybody that wants a job has a job, and but you still have this job growth rate. So where do those people come from? They come from outside of the county. And the engine, the economic engine, needs the fuel of talent. So it, you're drawing from a broader and broader area. So that means if you band together, it, what happens in other counties outside of this is good for Buncombe County and the city of Asheville. So they see this uh, partnership come into play, but, but that's the quantitative side, is you're growing as a percentage of the workforce from outside the area. The qualitative side is, honestly, in the mountains, the culture is, um, over time, you know, maybe it was a little isolated back in the day, and, and you didn't have, so people are used to coming together and making stone soup and, and being able to pull yourself up by your bootstraps. And I think that's important to have that kind of relationship with each other uh, moving into things. And, and they recognize, um, for the quantitative reasons I just talked about, um, they've started creating programs called Next ABL, which is those college kids uh, don't just graduate, but they graduate into something. And getting them involved early uh, so that they can have tickets to the concerts and be involved with uh, companies and the studies show if they are involved in their community, they will stay, or they would prefer to stay. So what are we specifically doing to, to address that? And then lastly, um, Bill, is the question was, you know, are you thinking about the short term as well as the long term? And I would 
would say um, in a hotel, we have some different hotels. You know, there's a, a little analogy. You know, you have price, quality, and speed. You know, kind of those three things. And you pick two, and I'll pick one. We can always come to a deal. But if you want the lowest price and the highest quality, we'll deliver that in like 2089. You know, right? <laughs> so it's you know, but that analogy of those three things came to a, an economic development project here the other day. They wanted all three things. They wanted great talent right now and the great at the right price. We can't afford to not pay attention to the hole in the boat right now, but you also have to look at the horizon of where we're, we're going. So. Thank you. And I have messed up because on my notes, Susan Gates was kind enough to send me two questions I was to ask the two.